Welcome, friends, to our time of devotional reflection for Tuesday, January the 10th, 2023. I'm Brian J. Monroe, pastor of Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. And I'm. this is coming to you from my office there, and I'm here to read for you from John MacArthur's Drawing Near Daily Readings for a Deeper Faith. And this is hopefully a way to help you with your discipleship walk with the Lord. Today's entry is entitled, Living to the Glory of God. God chose us to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in his beloved Son. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6. You were created to glorify God. Henry Martin, an Englishman, served as a missionary in India and Persia in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Upon his arrival in Calcutta, he cried out, Let me burn out for God, as he watched the people prostrating themselves before their pagan idols and heard blasphemy uttered against Christ. He wrote, This excited more horror in me than I can well express. I could not ex endure existence if Jesus was not glorified. It would be hell to me if he were to be always thus dishonored. That's from John Stott's Our Guilty Silence, Downers Grove, Illinois, the publishers, InterVarsity Press, 1967, pages 21 and 22. Martin had a passion for God's glory, and he was in good company. Angels glorify God. It says so in Luke chapter 2, verse 14. As do the heavens, Psalm 19, verse 1. And even animals in Isaiah 43, verse 20. But as a believer, you glorify God in a unique way because you are a testimony to his redeeming grace. You were created for the purpose of glorifying God. Even in the most mundane activities of life, such as eating and drinking. This is, measure, this is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. You are to flee immorality so you can glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 18 to 20. You are to walk worthy of your calling so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified. That's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12. Glorifying God is an enormous privilege and an awesome responsibility. When you see his character on display in your life, it reminds them of his power, goodness, and grace. But when they don't, God is dishonored and his character is called into question. Aim your life at God's glory. Make it the standard by which you evaluate everything you do. Pastor MacArthur suggests for prayer that we thank the Lord for the privilege of glorifying him. That's a good thing to do. Ask God to show you and me any areas of our life that do not honor him. Again, keep short accounts with God. Open yourself up to be examined and have him help you deal with those things you need to deal with. Find a trusted Christian friend who will pray with you and hold you accountable for the areas in which you know you need to change. And change will come. And finally, Pastor MacArthur suggests that you read Exodus chapter 33, verses, verse 12 to chapter 34, verse 9. It's a bigger section, but in that you can ask yourself as you read it, what did Moses request? What was God's response? And what does this teach us about his glory? Dear friends, I thank you for giving me just a few minutes of your time today and uh, so that I can read a devotional um, excerpt for you and you can consider those things. I pray that you'll take that time, multiply it by prayer and by a little further study and reflection. And until we can be together tomorrow to hear tomorrow's devotional message, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.